Hi everybody and welcome back to this video. Today we will be discussing how users can sign up to your Moodle site. So in other words, how users can create an account on your site. It is important to understand that every user needs to create an account first before they can enroll in any course. Moodle calls this sign up process authentication. So everyone who has created an account is considered an authenticated user. Before we learn how to authenticate users, please hit the subscribe button and then let's go. So there are two options to create an account on your Moodle site. Either you allow any user who visits your site to create an account or you manually invite people to create an account. In this video, we talk about the first option. With this option, you would have a little create an account button visible for everyone who visits your site right under the login window. Let me just show you how it looks like. I log out and there you go. This is my login page and you can see the create a new account button just here. Accessible for everyone who goes to my Moodle site. What that means is that literally anyone can sign up to your page without you having much control over it. This could obviously create some risk for your site as in you know, spammers and hackers, but also your maximum amount of users that are allowed with your selected plan can be reached fairly quickly um, without users even you know, necessarily, necessarily enrolling in any of your courses. So be a bit careful with this option. If you still want to go ahead, I will log back in and show you how it's done. You will have to enable this particular type of authentication method. To do that, you go to your site administration, then select the plugins tab and go down to authentication, which you can see here, and click on manage authentication. Here you make sure that your email based self registration is enabled, indicated by the open eye. But that's not all. You have to scroll a little bit further down and also enable email based self registration in the self registration option. On top of that, you have a few further options for sign up and logging processes. Some of them are very detailed and you can leave them as they are without any issues. If you still want to know the options, I'll quickly go through them. With the first one, you can allow users that have created an account to either log in with their email address or their username, which I actually find quite useful just in case someone forgets one of them. So you can just click here and this would allow it. With this option, you could allow users to create several accounts with the same email address. I don't know why this is even an option. You should never allow that. It creates way too much confusion. So leave that on no. That's the default actually. I don't know why it was ticked. So this option here is only important if you use an external database to authenticate users, which 99% of users don't do. So just leave it as it is, default no. Autofocusing, also leave it or no. It unnecessarily focuses users on the login field, but there's not a lot going on on the page anyway to confuse people, so it doesn't matter. If you want to allow guests to access your page, you would have to show the login button that looks like this on the first page. Here, here you can see the login as a guest button. So sometimes you might want to show some courses to guests as a maybe marketing strategy or like a teaser, then it's a good idea. Otherwise, leave guest button on hidden so that you only have actual enrolled students on your page. Let's go back to the settings now. If you only want to have a certain amount of users locked in at the same time, you can determine the number here. Once the number is reached, the oldest session gets automatically locked out. I personally would not put a maximum number and leave it at no. Um, I don't think you have to worry too much about the URL options. They would enable you to have the login page basically on a total different website, which would then link to your Moodle site here. Um, yeah. Let's not worry about it. If you really want to know it, leave me a comment. I'll get back to you. Instructions, however, is really good one. So you can create a personalized welcome message that displays in the welcome block. I'll quickly put just some random text in there 
to show you how it looks like. Let's save it quickly. And log out. And this is my personalized welcome message now. If you leave this box blank, it will just display the default message. I'll show you quickly as well how that looks like. Just click on Save Changes. We're going to log out again. And here you can see the default message. The next setting can be really interesting. It allows you to only authenticate users with a certain email address. So you could, for example, say that only students with your business email address or your university email address can create an account. All you have to do is type in the domain name, which is the last part of the email address after the ad. So if uh, the email address is blah, 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 at university.com, you would type in here university.com and only users with that email address ending would be able to sign up. On the other hand, you can deny users with a certain email address to create accounts um, using the same principle that I just explained to you. So you just provide the email address ending that you don't want on your site. Keep this on yes if you want the domain restrictions that we just had a look at to be applied to users who change their email address. Obviously you want that, otherwise the domain restriction doesn't really make sense. The last two options here can be used when you have registered for a Google reCAPTCHA key, which are these um, funny little looking words that you have to spell when signing up on the website so that the website can know that you're not a robot. Once you have all the settings as you like, don't forget to click Save Changes. And now everyone who visits your Moodle page can sign up. So let me just quickly show you how that would look like for users. Users would go to your site and they would click on the create a new account button. They would then have to go through a few policy readings, blah, 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 click next, uh, click next again, and they would have to agree to those policies and click next. And then they would have to provide a couple of information. Once they've provided all the details and clicked on create my new account, they will receive an email with a sign up link to finalize the process. If they don't receive the email and ask you, hey, what's going on? It's a good idea to check the spam folder that happened to me a couple of times. If you want to see who actually has an account on your site, you can go to site administration, select users, and then browse list of users. And this shows all the accounts that have been created. So one of them is obviously yours and the others are your students or your teachers. If you like, this is also where you can delete your users. You just click on the delete icon and delete those particular users. What you can also do from here is confirm the authentication if something goes wrong. So someone, for example, went through the creation process, but for some reason they couldn't get the link. You can manually accept them through the list here so they don't necessarily have to go through the link. And this is how it would look like. You can simply click confirm and that would make the user an authenticated user or you can resend the email. In this case, let's just click confirm and that particular user now has an account. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you next time.